<laughs> Whoopee! This is Martin the Martian popping up to say hello. <laughs> yes, this is one of these little calculating machines. Very clever, like Console the Monkey, which appeared about 100 years ago. We've had that in the shop for ages. This is a plastic version. She appeared out 15 years ago. It's very well made. It's quite slim, but nice, robust plastic for kids to enjoy and playing with before they actually do serious homework with calculations. It moves very smoothly, too. It's got a nice action both ways. <laughs> well, it's time for homework now, I suppose. Let's see if we can um, do a simple multiplication. Any number up to 12 multiply by any number up to 12. We'll try something in the middle like a 5 and a nine and see if we can get something in the window. <sighs> Five and nine and in the middle is 45. Now if I slide the left hand one a bit and five. could be five times something less, but eight, is it five eighths? 40. Oh, so it is working. He's intelligent, this creature. He's working. That's good. But anyway, it's a lot of fun for kids to play with. Um, but it's, it's a serious purpose because it's good for homework to do simple multiplications. A nice one. I was showing calculators about five years ago when we were celebrating Ada Lovelace's celebration of, of Centenary or something. So I was trying to find ones which I hadn't shown then. And that's certainly one that was new to me when I went through my collection. Here's another one which is very nice and very, very modern because this is um, this is microelectronics at work. It's um, it looks like a little wallet. It's supposed to be a specimen of a hundred thousand lira. That's Italian liras before the coming of the um, of the euros, I suppose. Yeah. And it's oh, it's got the whole lot here. It's got a good calculator here, and cleverly enough, on the back page is space there for them to be able to put in spaces for pages paper pages where you can put in your phone addresses and it's a proper little phone book in fact so all in a piece of plastic which is like a simple little wallet beautiful so let's turn it on and see if i can get at least something appearing in the display i'll put it onto the on position like that and see if we can get a focus on this one i'll press one of the things there we go Oh dear, we're going to press something here, and press something here, and press something here. So it is responding very nicely. But what a clever bit of um, microelectronics it is to make something. It's very nice, robust plastic. It's got a nice feeling to it as well. So it fits in your breast pocket um, because it's so small and light. That's a brilliant bit of technology. Another one I'm very keen on because these ones are such a wonderful photographic stuff it's one of those slow opening things it's a, it's a calculator and it's a, a calendar as well i think so let's just turn it on first and see this action here we are we squeeze the two sides and look at that action it's got two bars lifted up nice and evenly wow let's close it up again and i can see the um, display mode hold it like that you squeeze the two little pieces with your finger and thumb and then it's going to Slowly open. Beautiful. I thought I put batteries in this, but I seem not to have done so. Never mind. Anyway, batteries in, push away, and you can use it as a calculator, and it gives you uh, some calendar details as well. And when you're closing it up, you simply push it back and snap it. And that's a very nice thing. Again, almost small enough to put into a pocket. That slow motion though really kills me. I think it's a beautiful, a beautiful movement though. There's another one which is very, very clever indeed, but I don't think I've ever had it working. I did try taking it to pieces and putting new batteries in it. It looks for all the world like a little, let me just close it up again, like a little um, film cassette. And it's got plastic inside and you, to open it, you simply unroll it <laughs> like that. <laughs> now let's see if you can get this into focus. There, were, there was a little display in the middle there, but I can't um, get that to work again. It only had a tiny little button battery to make it work. And it's fairly fragile, actually, but that's one of these highly flexible bit of film which contains all the information. When you press it with your finger and thumb, 
it will actually feed in the numbers and the calculation, the uh, mathematical signs you want to do your calculations. But what a brilliant bit of design that is to look exactly like a little film cassette. That's what microelectronics can do to you. I suppose you can just make things so neat and so clever and so portable too. I love it. And there's one last one, which is by far the best one I've ever seen, I think. This is just an amazing one. It's um, produced by Bandai uh, in about 19... What was it? Uh, oh, 1980s. This is a long way back. Yes, 1988 this appeared. It's, um, it's a sliding block puzzle, but it's a calculator as well. It's astonishing, this. You take out a piece when you're doing this as a, as a sliding block puzzle, and you move the pieces up and down and round and round, etc. And you, but at the same time, you when you push the pieces, and I'll turn it on to show a display. There we are, there's a display there. And then I'm going to press something in the middle and see if I can get a few figures to appear. Uh, something in there. Uh, oh, there we are. Yes, I'm going to press a bit harder. What's, what's ingenious about this is it doesn't matter where the pieces are, if you're halfway through, what I'd like to do is obviously make a row of red squares, a green, yellow, blue, uh, and needs quite a bit of um, sliding around the pieces to do that. But if I'm halfway through, I'm getting bored or I feel I need to do some calculations, I do them without changing the pieces at all. They stay where they are, wherever they got. If the one's up here at the beginning and it's somewhere down there when I'm working through it, it doesn't matter, it still records a one or a plus sign, or an equals, or cancel. So what's going on there? Well, on the back of the pieces, I'll just show two pieces for the backs of them. There are tiny, tiny little indentations, which are very hard to see, but we'll have a go. On the back of these are very, very small indentations. And they're programmed to be able to press down on the pad So whatever that array of those little button, button, little little button things are, that gives the value of well, this one is a three, and this one was a, this one is a three, and this is a plus sign. But there's a, some arrangement of the um, buttons there for the pad to pick it up. The picked up here on the bottom, actually here, this bit here, which is beginning to appear, is all black. Has got little sensitive um, areas where those tiny bubbles push down on, and the array that they're producing gives the value that you wanted to have. So it doesn't matter where each piece is, the equal sign could be absolutely anywhere on that array, it'll still record an equal sign and you can do your calculations halfway through your, um, your, your the, the progress you're making in solving it, making perhaps lines of um, reds and greens and blues. A puzzle and a calculator and the two don't interfere with each other. That's astonishing to do that, I think. Uh, we'll have a go putting, well, let's try it, let's turn this on again. Uh, where's the cancel button? It's here. No, I put it up to about there. There we are. So we've got a cancel, we've got a cancel there. And now we'll have a go at pushing a six, which is about here. Six. And then we're going to move it down to here, so it's going to push down to the next one, next layer down, like that. And we push it there, and it still makes a six. So that's been used to six in that position or that position, but any position around the entire array, that six will be recorded as a six. It won't change. So let's try somewhere else. Uh, put it up to here, push it across there, push it across to there. And let's see what happens to push it here. So that's doing a six in three different positions. It just doesn't change at all. It's because the indentations at the bottom don't change, obviously. Each piece is, um, is, is fixed 
So that is really, to my mind, the most um, interesting uh, calculator I've ever seen because it's a perfect sliding block puzzle, which I love doing, and it's a calculator, and the two completely different functions can completely cooperate together. They don't interfere with each other, and you can break off at any one moment in your sliding game and do some calculations. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant design. <laughs> <laughs>